So, friends, it's the Christmas season, the Advent season, and we put up our Christmas trees. I'm not sure. Um, there has always been this understanding that Germans wait to put up their Christmas trees until closer to Christmas Eve, usually maybe on the 23rd uh, or even, yeah, close enough to Christmas Eve. But it seems as though people are putting up trees even earlier this year to make this uh, sense of peace and quiet in the home. Um, we Americans put our Christmas trees up usually right after Thanksgiving or at least uh, within the first week of December. So um, our lights are up, our uh, former Advent calendar pieces are out. And it got me thinking. It got me thinking about snow globes. Do you have snow globes at home? Um, I've been thinking about snow globes because... I feel as though this has been us this year. Our whole world has been turned upside down and it's kind of like this snow globe. Everything is topsy-turvy. Our lives and ways of operating have been turned upside down. We have been shaking and been shaken to our core and we're waiting for things like this snow to simply settle back down again, settle into our expected way of life. At certain points, I think in the last year, we, we might feel like we found our rhythm. Um, the kids went back to school at the start of the school year. People are used to working from home only to have the globe tipped and shaken and everything feels chaotic again. But I've also been thinking about snow globes in light of our gospel passage. In our passage today, we find John the Baptist out in the desert preaching and baptizing people and Jewish priests and keepers of the law are sent out to question him, trying to find out what the heck is going on. The question they ask John is poignant and they ask him multiple times in growing agitation, who are you? This question has been nagging at me these weeks. Who are you? Who are you in this season of chaotic snow? of our disturbed and mixed up life, who we are is revealed. As the snow settles, the center image is revealed. And I don't know about you, but I can answer the same way as John the Baptist. I'm not the Messiah. I can't save or protect. It is very clear that I can't heal the ones I love. I'm not capable of extending the peace that surpasses all understanding. The only thing I am capable of in similar fashion to John is to point towards the one who can do all of these things to make the path as straight as possible this season so that those around me can catch a glimpse of the Messiah who comes, Christ Jesus, the Lord. As our snow globes settle in our life, who we are is revealed. And I hope that you can state the same as in the book of Colossians, that when Christ is revealed, there you are also. As the snow of our disturbed lives settle down, it's not just we who are found there, but it is Christ Jesus who is found there. Jesus is the Messiah that John the Baptist was pointing to, and that is who we are called to point towards in this season 
of Advent. But here's the other thing that's been nagging me this past week. Fritz read in 1 Thessalonians that we are to be cheerful no matter what. Cheerful no matter what? Are you kidding me? In the NRSV, it says, be joyful in all situations. And I have been thinking to myself this week particularly, cheerful, joyful, no matter what? First Thessalonians goes on to say, thank God no matter what happens. Seriously, thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants us to live. I don't know about you, but this week I have had a very difficult time being cheerful or joyful in all of the situations we have found ourselves in. It's not easy, but I came across this very helpful phrase in my devotions this week, and it goes like this. It's not what if, it's even though it's not what if because our brains and our hearts and our spirits go directly to that question don't they what if i can't get home if my parents get sick what if i lose my job what if my kids get sick and i can't visit them in the hospital what if what if what if that's where our brain goes our hearts go directly don't they when our globes are turned upside down. But scripture points us towards this helpful phrase, even though, even though my parents might get sick, I know Jesus will be there with them. Even though my kids will be home doing their schoolwork here this coming week, I am so grateful my school has the technology to still provide education in the midst of this COVID season. Even though, even though, no matter what situation you find yourself in this week, it's not what if, it's even though. Even though we find ourselves in increasing COVID positive numbers here in Hanover and in Germany, here, Christ resides with us, and it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength in this season. So I invite you to pick up this phrase, even though, in the situations you find yourself in this week. And I want you to know that as my heart and my spirit grew anxious, I had providential moments this week as I prepared for today, I want to share one of those providential moments with you. As I already just spoke about earlier, you know that I gave James and Lewis this assignment about looking for God in their village in Scotland, and they reported back these pictures of the poppies and the rocks. Now, earlier this week, I was reading a post from a blog that I read quite frequently. It's called The Twelve Blog, and it invites, invites pastors and professors from my Reformed Church denomination back home in the, U in the U.S. to reflect on what they are seeing or thinking about. And this particular post I read this week was reflecting on this theme of joy for this third Sunday of Advent. What was the author Laura DeYoung thinking about? Painted rocks. I couldn't believe it. It turns out in her community in Michigan, people have been painting rocks, hiding rocks, looking for rocks since the pandemic began to rear its ugly head in earnest in April. And just this past week, as she was walking through the woods in her city of Grand Haven on a particularly warm day, warm December day, she heard kids screaming with delight as they discovered more painted rocks. 
I want to share with you the words that she wrote. Mostly, I've accompanied my friend and her two boys as they look for rocks and am privy to the exclamations of joy upon discovering a flamingo, an eggplant, or if you're really lucky, a troll painted on the rocks. Now, I would argue that even a four-year-old knows that a rock, painted and all, isn't the world's most exciting prize, but it's not really about the rock. It's about the finding of it. The unexpected, though worked for, result. The surprise and delight of finding something that you've been looking for without knowing what exactly that something would end up being. So it is with God. Friends, the, the Pharisees, the Levites, the Jewish priests went out to the desert to ask John the Baptist questions because they were looking for something. And you might be finding yourself in the same position today. You are looking for something that will anchor you in this season of Advent, in these rising times of anxiety and fear. And in this looking, you will find the joy of the Christ child born to us in a humble stable. Laura goes on to write, at the end of the year that has been long and hard, it might seem a preposterous thing to look for joy, but I have a hunch that because the year has been long and hard, joy may in fact be easier to find because we are so, so ready to receive it. We may not know how Jesus is going to show up in these darkening days, but if we're looking, we will know him when we see him. We'll recognize him when he appears in surprising, unexpected ways in the most unlikely places and the most unlikely people. And there will be joy in the finding because to find Jesus is to be reminded he never really left us, that he is God with us. He is Emmanuel. Friends, go looking for Jesus today. You may find him in a Christmas card mailed to you. You may find him in ornaments, blessed to be given to you by friends around the world. You may find him in the settling of your snow globe. It's not we who are found there, but it is Christ Jesus who is found there. You may find him even in these warm and cozy images of Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus. Friends, go looking for Jesus this Advent season. For when you find him in the unlikely places and people, there you will find joy. Amen.